Hello community and welcome to my virtual talk. My name is Matt Paremba and today I will be discussing the progress made towards implementing full system simulation of compute GPUs in GEM5. This talk will focus on some of the challenges, some of the solutions to the challenges and current plans for future features. So the reason for wanting full system support aligns well with the goals. The user should be able to use the native software stack with the native applications on the guest. Native software stack support means that the user can install a recent version of our Rockham stack, which supports the latest features relevant to contemporary compute GPU applications. The stack is initialized using apt-get on an Ubuntu guest image rather than building from source. Our goal is to have the most recent version of Rockham release working at the time of each Gem 5 release. With native applications, this means the user does not need to modify an application which runs on hardware to be able to run within Gem 5. Some typical modifications needed to run a compute GPU application in Gem5 typically require the user to add explicit host to device memory copies operations, for example, and parallelized containers such as array and array view and HC based on C AMP needed to be converted into standard pointers. In full system mode, any one of these options may be used. For ease of use, our goal is to provide either scripts to automatically download, install, and set up a disk image for Gem5 full system or to provide a downloadable disk image. Native applications built on the host and applications that run on native hardware will need to be copied to this disk image or a secondary benchmarks disk image and run in the simulator directly. With this, we expect the user should be able to set up and run an example GPU application within one day. Now this talk is broken up into two parts. The first part will provide extended background information about the current state of the GPU model, as well as some motivation and as to why an effort is being made to transition to full system mode simulation. To explain some reasoning for the full system mode support, some background of the current support might be needed. There's another talk in the Gem5 workshop this year that gives an overview of the existing SC mode support for compute GPU, as well as background on the GPU model if you have not already seen that. To summarize, currently Gem5 supports running GPU applications in SC mode on Rockham 1.6. The model in the mainline Gem5 has been available for several years to run HSAIL, and the GCN3 model is provided in a separate repository under a feature branch. More details on these can be found on the Gem5 website. Now, focusing on the figure on the right, the user space box shows the components of the runtime which run in user space. The application loads compiler libraries and Rocker, the Rocker runtime, which communicates to the driver using Rock-T or the Rock'em Thunk. In the case of Gem5, the Thunk is an IOCTAL interface which communicates with an emulated driver, which is part of the Gem5 source. This is one of the first changes that needs to be supported for full system mode. Since the Thunk interfaces with the driver, both of which are software components, they are subject to change much more often than, say, for example, the interface between the driver and the hardware itself. This means much more maintenance is required on the code base to keep up to date with the most recent Rockham stack. With FS mode, the interface between the driver and hardware changes much more rarely. So this limitation is part of the reason why SE mode requires Rockham 1.6. Nevertheless, the SE mode model is readily available and dozens of applications have already been ported to Gem5 and tested. However, as these applications age, they will eventually become replaced or deprecated and their replacements will likely require more recent software stacks. In order to support SE mode simulation, many new features had to be added to Gem5. For example, virtual memory areas are needed by the Rockham runtime. The memory map system calls had to be heavily modified and support for tracking movable memory information needed to be added. These features were added to the develop branch of Gem5 in late March. Other issues that arose with SE mode were non-determinism and compatibility issues. Two runs in SE mode differed due to timing between the host and guest for common operations like file IO. This makes it difficult to debug using tools like the exec trace diff provided with Gem5. There are also simulation deadlocks that have been occasionally observed due to timing between the system calls. In terms of compatibility, Rockham is officially supported on Ubuntu. 
This can make it difficult to install and cause potential incompatibilities in library versions when running on other distributions as the host. For ease of use, we cannot assume the user has a specific distribution installed. The last change in the current model is that it assumes an APU or an integrated GPU device. Different from a discrete GPU device, the APU shares memory with the host system and is not supported by Rockham at the time of this presentation. So this slide gives a general overview of the changes that will occur when transitioning from SE mode to FS mode simulation. This figure is provided for reference, but the key difference here is that we are changing the interface of the stack from thunk to emulated driver to off-the-shelf driver to simulated device. Now that we have background in the second part, I'll discuss the modifications required to support full system mode, some work that has already been proposed or completed, and the work remaining before the model can be released into the mainline Gem 5. The first new feature to address is support, supporting a device with its own cache hierarchy and memory. This will be the largest device added to Gem 5 to date, so there is some support missing to enable this. As, as an example, topology, we would like to model what is shown on the right on this slide. The key challenges with this type of topology are allowing for multiple Ruby protocols for the CPU and GPU device and allowing the GPU to have its own device memory. CPU and GPU coherence protocols are typically very different and therefore we want to be able to support accurately modeling both CPU and GPU protocols. Now, this is already somewhat supported by Gem5. A user could define a protocol which builds the files for multiple protocols in the, into the Gem5 binary and create a topology that consists of Ruby controllers from both protocols. Now, one main problem with this is that if both protocols have common controllers. For example, to prevent code duplications, the protocols might share the same directory controller. The key problem is determining which directory a request should be routed to. A request from a GPU last level cache should not ever be routed to a directory belonging to the CPU, for example. The problem becomes even more difficult since there is a possibility of address aliasing. As an example, the GPU might assume that its device memory range is from 0 to 4 gigabytes, while the host assumes its memory range is from 0 to 8 gigabytes. Supporting this case can be achieved in multiple ways, but the way we found to be the most lightweight was to allow Ruby to have multiple Ruby networks per Ruby system. The Python style configuration that Gem5 uses already allows the user to create multiple network objects. Then the only change that is needed is to ensure that requests stay within their network. The same component mappings can be used since directory zero in one network is different from directory zero in another network. Using multiple networks per Ruby system also easily de uh, enabled device memory to be simply added as a physical memory object in the GPU device. The address range overlap is taken care of and the existing serialization methods can be reused for checkpointing support. We plan to support checkpointing before the first kernel loss launched by the first release of the GPU FS mode. It will add support for checkpointing the GPU state in the future. The SE mode model that is currently in use already provides most of the GPU components. The missing pieces are the interfaces between the driver and hardware and support for virtual memory on the GPU device. As mentioned earlier, the SE mode model communicates with the GPU model with an interface between the thunk and an emulated driver. Since the new FS mode interface is between the driver and the simulated GPU device, we must add support to model this interface. In AMD GPUs, this interface is done using a DMA engine over the PCIe bus. This support is currently in development with the preview of the interface on the GCN3 feature branch in the AMD repository. The second piece is support for virtual memory on the GPU device. Since the SE mode models an APU, the host side page tables are leveraged there to provide address translation. With a discrete GPU, the GPU device itself needs to manage page tables to provide address translation support. Support for device level virtual memory is currently under development. P 
page tables are required in the FS mode are much more complicated than what is supported in SE mode. So we can't simply rely on the XS, x86 page tables since we do not share memory with the host. Therefore, we must support the page table formats expected by the device and the driver. Furthermore, we must support the various bars in the PCI device. The zero bar provides a path to memory of the device, which is used by the driver to set up these page tables, while the two and five bars are used for doorbells and memory mapped I.O. respectively. And various doorbells and MMIO address must be deciphered and handled appropriately in the simulated device. The work we have been doing so far is documented in the form of Jira tickets on the public Gem5 Atlassian website. This slide shows an overview of the different categories of each of these tickets. First, there are some changes which may impact Gem5 users since they, since they touch common code. We have provided some proposals in these tickets descriptions and have uploaded chain sets for review. In parallel with this effort, we plan to move the SE mode GCN3 related components off of our staging branch and into the mainline Gem5 repository, since these will be utilized by the FS mode as well. The remaining FS mode specific changes are collected into an EPIC link. For those, please refer to JIRA ticket 195. Finally, there are some changes, mostly x86 related, that would be useful for FS mode support. These are general changes that would also benefit the Gem5 community as a whole. So to recap, we're moving towards implementing GPU full system mode through su support through several changes. First change we are planning to make is a lightweight modification to the Ruby network and Ruby system components. Again, proposals and code reviews are available on Gem5, Jira, and Garrett websites. We will simultaneously update the GPU compute support to add GCN3 ISA by merging our feature branch into the Gem5 mainline and leverage the components that exist in this branch in the FS model. Once these changes are made, we plan to submit changes to implement GPU specific features required for GPU FS mode. The goal is to provide better compatibility over the current SE mode as discussed earlier and our target release time frame for all of this will be before the Gem5 20.1 release. Uh, thanks for listening, and if you have any questions, I'll be available on June 3rd to answer any questions.